Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. This is the third and final part of my 251 series. And if you didn't check out videos one and two, where I first talk about what exactly a 251 is, and then how to actually create some lines over these 251s, you could check those videos out using the links that I have in the description down below. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to spice up your 251s. That's gonna be harmonically. We're gonna add some notes, do some alterations, and really think about different ways to simply play over the 251s in slightly different way to create some different and some colorful, interesting sounds. Just like in the previous two videos, I have a specific PDF worksheet that's completely free that goes along with this video, and you can get that using the link at the top of the description below, and I'll also put that link in the pinned comment. Make sure you grab all three PDFs for each of the videos Videos. So when you're going through the videos and when you're practicing yourself, you have all of these worksheets as a resource. So speaking of that PDF, let's jump into it now. All right, so as you see, we're in the Spice Up Your 251s PDF. And like always, I'm gonna be using the treble clef version because I play saxophone, which is a treble clef instrument. And I think most of you play treble clef instruments as well. If you play a bass clef instrument, make sure you look at and download the bass clef version because I have both of them available. Just like I had in the last video, here's a review of what a long 2-5-1 in C major is. It's a full measure of the two chord, which is D minor seven, a full measure of the five chord, which is G seven, and then the resolution chord of C major seven. I keep using C major and concert C major because it's the easiest to see the alterations and the notes because there's no key signature. Obviously, whatever key you're playing it in, all of these alterations, all these notes apply in those different keys, so just keep that in mind. Now I want to quickly talk about what the short 2-5-1 in C major is. Basically, it's just two beats of the two chord and then two beats of the five chord and then the resolution chord. Why should you differentiate between these? Well, you're gonna come across different versions of 2-5-1s, longer ones, shorter ones, and I think it's important to be able to, one, know what they are and know how to approach them and how to kind of attack those chords. I'm gonna show you now how to kind of combine the short and long two fives and really make it actionable for you so you can actually apply it to your playing. So like it says here, we're gonna turn a long two five one into a short two five one. Basically, we're still taking a full measure of the two chord and then as you see here, a full measure of the five chord, then the resolution, but during that measure of the five chord, we're going to play the two chord for two beats, and then the five chord for two beats. So basically you have four beats of the two chord, then two more beats of the two chord, then the five chord. Why is this important to know? Well, a lot of times people want to learn short two five vocabulary because it's shorter, it's easier to memorize, easier to learn, and kind of you can put it in your playing a little quicker than these long two fives. Also, if you just learn short two five one vocabulary, you can play that over short two fives, but you can also like it says here, turn a long two five one into a short two five, so you can take that short two five one vocabulary and apply it over top of the long two fives. So it works over short and long. Also, for me personally, I like having direction when I'm playing, and harmonically, having more chords available to actually voice lead through gives me more of a roadmap when I'm soloing versus just sitting on one chord for longer. So I love thinking of long two fives as the long two, and then a short two, five, one. Up until now, everything I've taught you has been diatonic to the one, and in this case, it's C major. All the chord tones for the two chord, the five chord, the one chord, and all the lines that we talked about in the previous video are all diatonic, which means they're all in the key of the one, which is C major. Now, this video is called How to Spice Up Your Two Five Ones, so I'm gonna give you four simple, examples of how to add some extra notes and some different ideas over top of the five chord to create a really cool harmonic sound. By the way, I'm not just gonna be giving you random things to play and just say, you know, just play some random notes and see what happens. Yes, that's great, but that's like sending someone into the kitchen and saying, hey, there's 8,000 ingredients in here, just mess around with it and see what you come up with, right? You need sometimes a guide for a recipe and this is a great guide and I think it's actionable for you because you can instantly apply these alterations and these sounds into your play. So you notice I wrote alterations on the five. All of the alterations I'm gonna be talking about are over the five chord, so in this case, G7. I'm not gonna be altering the two at all, we're still leaving that alone as D minor seven. So any setup you have with lines or chord tones from the previous video, you can apply them here and when I talk about lines in a second, you'll see what I mean. So the first alteration I'm gonna be talking about 
is turning the G7 into a G7 flat nine. But more specifically, thinking of the third, the fifth, the flat seven, and flat nine of G7. Why am I not thinking of the root? Well, what we're doing here is by thinking of these notes, three, five, flat seven, flat nine, we're creating a diminished seven chord. This could either be called B, D, F, or A flat diminished seven. So what this means is every time you see a dominant chord, you can create a diminished seven chord based on the third, the fifth, the flat seven, or the flat nine, which equals those exact four notes in any configuration, and it creates a really cool sound. Here's what those four notes sound like over top of the G7 chord. And by the way, I'm gonna be demonstrating some lines using this sound in a little bit once I go through all four sounds. For the second sound, I'm gonna be talking about the G7 flat nine add 13. By the way, if these chord tones and these chords look really complicated, the idea is we're not really thinking of what the chord is called. What we're thinking of is this right here, this alteration, in which case over a G7, you're gonna be playing an E major triad. If you notice, we have the notes E, G sharp, and B, which create the chord tones 13 flat nine and the third. Do you have to know that it's the 13 flat nine third? No, but if you know that you have a G7 chord, you play E major triad over top of it, it sounds really cool. Here's what that E major triad sounds like over top of a G7 chord. This is the really cool thing about thinking in kind of chords like this, like simple chord tones and triads over top of other chords. You can create really complex harmonies that sound really colorful and great, but you don't have to be thinking really complex of the flat nine, 13, this, uh, C, G7, play E major triad. You can think about going down a minor third. If you see a C7, you can play an A major triad. You see an F7, you play D major triad, so on and so forth. If you understand the concept of where to place that major triad over top of the dominant chord, you're gonna create some really, really cool sounds. So I'm gonna move on to the third sound here and it's using another triad and it's gonna be the A flat minor triad over top of G7, which gives you the chord G7 flat nine flat 13. So the A flat minor triad are the notes A flat, C flat, and E flat. They would be the chord tones, flat nine, third, and flat 13. Whoa, that sounds super complicated. Once again, G7, go up a half step, play A flat minor triad. Oh, you know minor triads. If you play an A flat minor triad over G7, here's what that sounds like. Isn't this really cool? You could take a simple idea like a major triad or a minor triad, and as long as you know where to apply it and what chords to apply it over, you can create some really, really interesting sounds. And for the final sound, I'm gonna be adding a D flat major triad over top of G7, which gives you the chord G7 flat nine sharp 11. So the three notes for a D flat major triad are D flat F A flat, the chord tones being sharp 11, flat seven and flat nine. Here's what a D flat major triad sounds like over top of G7. Here's the thing, if you wanna switch this into different keys, you just have to do the work of knowing how far away these triads are. What I mean by that is, if you have G7 and then you apply a D flat major triad, you have to know how far G and D flat are away. In this case, they are a tritone away or three whole steps. So if you have, for example, F7, you would go up three whole steps, that gives you B natural, so you'd play a B triad over F7. If you have C7, you would play an F sharp or G flat triad over that C7. You just kind of have to figure out how far the roots are away from the dominant chord and from the alteration triad, in this case like D flat to G. Then you can really apply it to any of the 12 keys. And that's where practice actually comes in. That's right, spoiler alert, big crazy announcement. You can actually practice improvisation. It's not just playing random stuff and hoping it works. You can take some of these sounds and say, I like this sound. I'm going to apply this to all 12 keys. I'm just going to work on playing the major triad, the minor triad, whatever, over all the dominant chords and just maybe even just test myself and have somebody say C7 and then you have to say the triad. G7, F sharp 7, whatever it is, but knowing that this works over this and then being able to just apply it to different situations is how you're going to build your vocabulary and spice up your two five ones. So now if you jump 
to the second page of the PDF, I'm actually gonna play four different long and four different short 251s using these alterations. So you'll see on the first measure of each of the lines, I just reiterate what the alteration is gonna be. So I say it's gonna be the flat nine, you're gonna be using the diminished seven. Second line, I'm using the flat nine 13, using E major triad, so on and so forth. I give you the alteration first, just to remind you what it was, one of those four above. And then I give you a long 251 line, and then a short 251 line. Here's what the first long 251 line sounds like using the diminished seven sound. You'll notice, like I mentioned before, I'm not gonna be altering any notes over the D minor seven. So I just kind of chose some different notes and some different intervals and shapes that I liked, but basically all the action is happening over the five chord. If you notice, all the notes here, B, D, G sharp, B, F, G sharp, D, F, that's all notes right here. And I wrote G sharp instead of A flat, but it's the same enharmonic note. So all those notes work right there over the dominant chord, and then I resolve right there to the third. Now, here's what the short 251 going to C major sounds like using the same sound. So same thing here, I just kind of go down, starting on D, which is the root of D minor, scaling down diatonically in C major, and then over the dominant chord, look at the notes. G sharp, B, F, G sharp, and then a resolve to G. Pretty straightforward there. Once you start hearing the sound, it'll make a lot more sense, and then you'll be able to play it for as long or as short as you need to. Now, for the second sound, I'm gonna be using that E major triad over the G7, and here's what this long 251 sounds like. For this one, I go down the two chord. I actually start on the nine of the two chord, the E, and just kind of go nine, flat seven, five, flat three, nine, and then back up. And then here, look, I literally just play, there's the E triad, and I add in the note F natural here because it's the flat seven. There's the E again. I add the flat seven there again. Then I go back to G sharp B. So it's basically this entire measure is an E triad, but I just add the note F natural in there to kind of make it a four note line, four notes going down, four notes going back up, which resolves me to the nine here over the C major set. Now, here's what the short two, five, one sounds like. For this one, I just start on the root of the D minor chord. I go one, two, three, four, just straight up diatonically. And then here's the E triad right there. And then I just kind of scale to D natural and then skip down to the five here. You can really resolve wherever you want. I decided I wanted to skip at the end. I could have just held this D over to here. I could have had I could have had to go down to B. I could have had to go back up. Really, whatever you want. The idea though for this specific video, this specific PDF, and this specific exercise is that we're just focusing on adding a specific sound over top of the dominant chord to create a different sound. You can Think of any kind of shape to any line you want, diatonic or altered. It doesn't matter. That's just your preference of, do you want linear sounds? Do you want skips? Do you want different rhythms? Whatever you want. The idea here is adding the alterations on the notes. Speaking of rhythms really quick, you probably noticed that I'm using only eighth notes here. That's because if I started altering rhythms and giving you options of rhythms, it gets too alter. There's too many options. There's millions and millions and infinite variables of rhythm. We're just focusing on harmony here, so I figured I would just keep it eighth notes. Now for the third sound, using the A flat minor triad over G7, which gives you this, the G7 flat nine, flat 13. Here's what the long two, five, one sounds like. So once again, here I just play notes in the key of C major, really thinking of how am I gonna lead into the G7. And then here you notice I have the A flat minor triad right away. I have A flat and then I wrote B instead of C flat, just to make it easier to read. So there's the triad right there. And then I kind of play the flat seven and the root of G seven. And then I go right back to it. There's the triad again. Remember the accidentals are gonna carry through. So there's E flat, B and A flat again. Nice little half step resolution into the five. Now here's what the short two five one sounds like.
So again, I'm just scaling up diatonically. Here's the triad right there, E flat, B, A flat, and then I do a flat seven here, resolving to the third. There, seven three resolution works really well. On the topic of voice leading and resolutions, I hope throughout this three-part series, you realize that I'm starting with just what the chords are, how to construct them, how to identify them. Then I got into voice leading a little bit and actually creating a line. Now we're taking the same line creation, the same voice leading, nothing different there, but we're altering some of those notes. Always realize that no matter how altered you change the notes or change the rhythms, the principles of great voice leading still apply. There's a reason why certain musicians just sound like they can flow through chord changes so well, even if they're playing really outside the changes or inside. It's mostly because of voice leading. Go back and listen to Charlie Parker. He's playing so much chromaticism, so many altered notes, so many different things, but it works through the chords because of the voice leading, because of the resolutions. And the more altered you make these chords, like the dominant chord, if you have strong voice leading getting out of it to the resolution, it's gonna sound that much better, that much more stable because of that voice leading. Now I'm onto the final alteration, and that's gonna be using the D flat major triad over top of G7. That's gonna give us a G7 flat nine sharp 11. Here's what the long two five one sounds like. So I start off, I kind of use the honeysuckle rose line here, as you probably heard, if you know that. And then it kind of got me down into this. So you see right out of the gate, here's the D flat major triad. It's the five, the one, the three, the five of D flat major. So it's just A flat, D flat, F, A flat. It's just the literal triad. I didn't add any notes in between it. Then from there, I actually went up to B flat, um, a different note there. It's an, another altered note, but I figured it works pretty well. It's technically the sharp nine of G7. Could have written it as A sharp. But then I kind of scale back down where I have A flat once again, then the root, the flat seven, and then resolve on the third here. Now, here's what the short two five one sounds like. So I start on the note low G, and I just scale up diatonically to get me to the note D flat here because I play just the straight up D flat major triad, and once again, I add that extra note of B flat. I'm not gonna get into that right now. It's Once again, it's a sharp nine over G7, but know that you know any of the 12 notes technically work, but I wanted to get from the A flat there to land on the, the natural seven there, and I didn't wanna put the note A natural uh, because we're altering that nine, so I wanted to do the other alteration of nine, sharp nine, as well as the flat nine here, so that kind of had me voice lead from A flat, through B flat resolving on the note B. Now, finally, if you look at page three, I said, write your own. And basically I gave you spots here to do exactly what I did, which is write out a long two, five, one line and a short two, five, one line for each of the sounds. When you go through these, realize that this is the alteration here. This is what I want you to think about when you apply this. Don't go away from it. The idea of practice and exercise is that you're taking something simple concise and very focused, and you're gonna work on that thing. Sure, we can combine it with a million things later. You can change it as much as you want. It's not that you have to play this, but if you're working on trying to add alterations into your two five ones, this is the great starting point. So I wrote here, you can put your long two five one here, you can put the short two five one here, but I only gave you space for one each for each alteration. You can copy this page as many times as you want. You can print out different copies. You can just write it on your own blank staff paper, whatever you want. I just want you to understand that there's the alteration, here's a spot for a long two five, and then I want you to write out a short two five. Because remember, just like I showed in the beginning, turning a long two five into a short two five, once you have a whole bunch of short two five one lines written out and some that you like, what you can actually do is take whatever you wrote here over the long two, and then take what you wrote here, and then you could basically put that there to then get you through the chords in a different way. So then you can start mixing and matching. You can take maybe the two here and the five here, or the two, short two five down here, and then resolve. And then maybe you come down here and you take what you wrote here for the two, maybe what you wrote here for the short two five, you know, combine that, whatever you want. But I think the best way for you to start doing this is just write out a long two five and a short two five for each of the alterations then maybe write out a few more, pick a few that you like, then start mixing and matching them, 
And I think you'll come up with some really cool ideas, some new ideas, and you're not going to spend hours and hours and hours trying to randomly find a cool sound. All right, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate the fact that you took time out of your day to watch this video and get better at 251s. This is the final part in my three-part 251 series where I did in more of an intro to 251s, what they are, how to build some lines through the chords, and then how to spice those lines up. If you wanna go even deeper with 251s, I did a video a while back uh, like a basically a 251 masterclass. I'll put the link to that in the description below as well. There's a PDF that goes along with that one. And in that, I go even further with using my six step voice leading process to learn how to get through 251 specifically. That's completely free once again. So go check that out if you wanna go even further beyond this three-part series. My goal always on this channel is to help you out in your playing, but also not just help you out to get better in general, but help you out by not wasting time and give you simple and efficient ways that you can practice to get better. So you're not spending hours and hours and hours that you don't need to on the instrument. I'm a big believer in focused practicing, short amount of time is gonna be way better than just putting in the hours. Yeah, it's cool to say you practice for five hours, but if you can get the same thing out of one hour or 30 minutes, wouldn't that be better? I think so, and I think a lot of you think so as well. If there are any other topics that you ever wanna see me teach here, whether it's related to jazz playing, improvising, just playing songs in general, saxophone or any other instrument, please let me know in the comments below. I love making videos that you want, because it makes you happy, makes me happy because it helps you. It's a win-win all around, so definitely let me know. Be sure to grab the PDF using the link at the top of the description below and in the pinned comment so you can follow along with this video. You can have it saved, you can print it out, you can start spicing up your own 251 lines that you write out as well. Thanks so much for watching in this 251 series. It was a lot of fun for me. I love reading all the comments that you give me, all the feedback, even the, all the emails I get from you about these videos. It's been nothing but positive. It's nothing but great. And I love to hear that you're learning from my videos because that's obviously my goal. Thanks so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.